Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's Chemistry class. I'm back with the third video in this series about the states of matter. Now I know I've been mentioning intermolecular forces throughout the last several videos. What is an intermolecular force? Well, I'm here to answer all of those questions. There's three of them. Go grab your notes so we can learn all about it. When we're talking about intermolecular forces, first I want you to understand that the state of matter that a substance is in is dependent on the intermolecular forces. If you've already watched my video on states of matter, I talk about intermolecular forces a lot how solids have very strong intermolecular forces. That's what gives them their rigid shape. Liquids, while still having strong intermolecular forces, not as strong as solid, that's why the particles can slide past each other. And gases, very, very weak intermolecular forces. That's why those particles can fly all over the place. Now, the basic definition of an intermolecular force, it's just the force that holds molecules together. The intermolecular forces, that's how molecules grab on to each other. If you're looking at even just a little spot of water, millions and millions of water molecules are making up that little drop of water. But they stay together in that drop because they're all attracted to each other. All of the molecules are attracted to each other. That attraction, that's called intermolecular forces. We're gonna talk about three types of intermolecular forces. The first one is the hydrogen bond. Now, the hydrogen bond will only form between molecules that contain hydrogen, and then the other molecule could contain fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. It's because they're very electronegative, and it does have something to do about that electronegativity difference. You may have heard of hydrogen bonds in biology. Water molecules are held together with hydrogen bonds because water is H and O's. DNA, you've also heard of hydrogen bonds when we talk about DNA. If we think about DNA just real quick, you know, DNA is a double helix. And so you've got one helix and then you have the other helix. And you know, the G goes with C and the A goes with T and you get these bonds right here. Well, G bonds with C, that is a hydrogen bond. Or when A goes with T, that's a hydrogen bond. Let's see the actual mechanics of a hydrogen bond. So let's use water as an example. So if we have a molecule of water, remember water is a bent shape because we've got those lone pairs. I'm not gonna draw them, but remember that's why it is bent. And if we put two water molecules beside each other, so remember water is polar, where the oxygen is slightly negative because it pulled the electrons towards the oxygen leaving hydrogen feeling slightly positive. So this slightly positive hydrogen is going to be attracted to this slightly negative oxygen. But we would normally show hydrogen bonds or all intermolecular forces as a dotted line. Because, let's explain the difference right quick. Here, this is called an intramolecular bond, intra molecular. And then this hydrogen bond, this is intermolecular. Let's think about those words, or that, not the words, let's think about the prefixes. If we're talking about an interstate, like for us here in Texas, Interstate 35 is close by, and it is inter, I-N-T-E-R. It can go cross state lines. It can be outside of the state. But if we had an intrastate, which we don't call them intrastates, we call them state highways. State highways, they have to stay inside of the state. So intra, that stays inside. So an intramolecular bond, these are our regular chemical bonds, you know, like ionic and covalent. And that's what holds this oxygen and this hydrogen together as a whole molecule, very, very strong. Intermolecular, that's why we show them with the dotted line to show they're not quite as strong as a regular chemical bond. An intermolecular, that's outside of the state. Interstate is outside of the state. And so we show that with a dotted line. That dotted line also shows us that it's not quite as strong as a regular chemical bond like ionic bonds or covalent bonds. You know, I was just thinking about the difference between the, the prefix intra and inter, and it also made me think of the internet. The internet connects you all over the world. But I know, for example, if you work at a building and they have an intranet, you can only get on that intranet while you're there. So if I'm at home and I wanted to check some status at work, I wouldn't be able to because it's a closed system and it's only available inside my office building, okay? Hydrogen bond, 
strongest intermolecular force. It's the strongest, and it can only be formed between hydrogen and fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. Let's look at the second type, dipole-dipole. Now, this is the attraction between other polar molecules. Hydrogen and the fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, specialized polar molecules because of their such the electronegative difference. But we have other polar molecules that has a little bit lesser electronegative difference. That's the attraction that these types of molecules are going to have. So for example, if we had hydrochloric acid, H bonding with Cl, that is a polar molecule because there is a great difference between the electronegative. If we have a lot of hydrochloric acid molecules, then they would hold together with a dipole-dipole bond. Again, we're going to show that dotted line to show the intermolecular force, and we would need to know that it's not quite as strong as that chemical bond that's holding the H and the Cl together. Okay, so dipole-dipole, that's between polar molecules other than hydrogen, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. Let's look at the last one. This one's called London dispersion forces. And this can be between any molecules. Now this is commonly how nonpolar molecules are held together. Let's just use um, a diatomic molecule. Let's use bromine. So we've got two bromines stuck together. This bond that's holding them together, this is a nonpolar covalent bond. That means the electrons are being shared equally. So this side does not fill a charge. This side does not fill a charge. And remember, those electrons are constantly moving around. Well, let's just say we freeze time for a second, and they just happen to be over here for this bromine. And in that moment of time, we have another bromine molecule. And when we freeze that moment in time, this bromine over here happens to have all of the negatives on this bromine, leaving this bromine feeling just slightly positive. Now, it only lasts for a second because these electrons are in constant motion, but for that second, we're going to have a force of attraction between that slightly feeling negative bromine and that slightly positive feeling bromine. Again, it doesn't happen for a long time. You know what it's kind of like? Think about a balloon. If I picked up a balloon and touched it to the wall and then let it go, it's gonna fall straight to the ground. But if I first rub that balloon on my head and then stuck it to the wall, it's gonna stick there for a few seconds. And why that is, is because we've disrupted the electrons. We have created a negative feeling area and a positive feeling area. And when that area is feeling slightly negative or slightly positive, they'll attract each other. But just like that balloon that after a few seconds, it's just gonna fall to the ground. After a few seconds, these positive and negative electrons and protons, they redistribute back into a different area and that force of attraction is lost. So if we have a lot of these nonpolar molecules, the attraction is very short lasting and they're having attractions here and then there and then here and then there. And so it's happening frequently enough that you can kind of hold them together, but it doesn't last very long. London dispersion forces. Hydrogen, that's the strongest because they are very electronegative. Dipole, dipole, we're still talking about polar molecules, so a pretty good strength, but not as strong as hydrogen bonds. And then London dispersion forces, since we're having to induce that force of attraction, not strong at all. Okay, well, I hope that helps you understand intermolecular forces. Let's just kind of review back for a second. The reason why a solid has very strong intermolecular forces is because the way those molecules grab onto each other very strongly, you hold that rigid shape. But when the intermolecular forces are a little bit weaker, those particles can slide past each other like in a liquid. And then gases, very weak intermolecular forces, that's what allows those particles to just fly all over the place because they're not really grabbing on to each other very strong. Or if they do grab on to each other, it only lasts for a second. Okay, so that was everything that you need to know about intermolecular forces. Keep letting this go. Stay tuned to the next video so we can talk about phase changes. Until next time, bye y'all.